On this episode, we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review of El Bandido Yankee Tequila right here on the Tequila Hombre coming up next. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre where today we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review of El Bandido Yankee Tequila. The brand had sent me the uh, Blanco and the Reposado for review. So today we're gonna tell you a little bit about how this tequila is made, what it's all about, the founders and everything, as well as do a tasting and review. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. All right, so El Bandido Yankee is uh, was actually created by two former athletes, Jim Bob Morris, who's a former football player for the Green Bay Packers, and Chris Chelios, who is a former hockey player for the Detroit Red Wings and the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, for those of you that know hockey or hockey fans like myself, uh, you knew anytime you'd be playing against Chris Chelios, <clears throat> you hated the guy because um, he just got into, uh, got under everyone's skin. It was very aggressive um, and can be sometimes known as a cheap shot artist. Uh, when he played hockey, but he was a great hockey player, Hall of Famer, um, definitely well respected in the hockey arena. So um, these two gentlemen wanted to create the perfect uh, tequila and wanted to make it affordable. So they went out and um, found NOM 1107, which is the El Vejito uh, Distillery, and worked on creating this tequila. So um, that's kind of like the creation and the background story of it. Let's talk a little bit about how this tequila is made. All right, so El Bandido Yankee is made at NOM 1107, which is El Vijito. Uh, it's the name of the distillery. It is the same distillery that makes Sammy Hagar and uh, Guy Fieri's Santo Fino. They uh, make some good tequila there, so this could be really good. The processes they use for making this tequila, they actually cook the Weber Blue Agave in brick ornos for approximately 40 hours. Then after the cooking is completed, they use a roller mill to extract the sugars uh, from the agave fibers after the uh, agave are shredded. Then they, uh, they after they extract the sugars using a roller mill, then is fermented in stainless steel tanks and then twice distilled using copper pot stills. And then after distillation, they oxygenate to soften up the tequila and to uh, make it so it's a little smoother and not as uh, harsh as some tequilas can be. And after that, it is then bottled at 40% alcohol by volume for the Blanco. And then the Reposado is then put in bourbon, previously used uh, American oak bourbon barrels and aged uh, until it is ready. So there you go. That's the production details on how this tequila is made. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the tasting portion and see what this tequila is all about. All right. So I do know uh, the people, too, that helped uh, Chris Chelios and Jim Bob in putting this together. So they had some really respectable uh, tequila people working with them um, to make sure that this tequila was done right. They wanted to make sure that um, they weren't like a lot of other celebrity brands out there and that it actually... Uh, was done traditionally and with no additives and done the right way. And one of their goals, too, was to make this affordable. The Blanco goes for $38.99, and the Repo goes for $43.99. We currently don't have it up on Ferment and Still, but if this is good, we will add it. All right, so um, looking at the Blanco in the glass... It coats the glass nicely. Legs and tears are starting to form. You can see them coming down the glass there. So it's going to have a nice viscous mouthfeel to it. Nice oily mouthfeel, which is good. And then um, you can see now it's starting to break. They see the legs and tears starting to form there. Looking at the tequila itself, it is crystal clear. Little dashes of silver dashing through, but looks fantastic. All right, so let's see what we get on the nose on this, because, of course, we do taste our tequila with our eyes, our nose, and our mouth. So let's see what we get on the nose on this. Definitely has nice cooked agave, so cinnamon and baking spices coming through. Pinking uh, notes of citrus. <laughs> Ooh. 
but there's not a whole lot to it. Maybe a little bit of mint and minerality to it, but the, it's there's not a whole lot to it, which is fine. It, they don't have to be super complex as long as they they taste good and really uh, show the agave flavors. So this one, I'm mostly picking up cinnamon and baking spices for the cooked agave, a hint of citrus, a little bit of mintiness in there, and some mineral um, minerals from the most likely from the water that's used. But it smells really good. So uh, let's see what we get on the flavor profile. Let's do the tasting portion. So first we're gonna get our mouth acclimated to 40% alcohol. Before we do any, any tasting for notes and stuff. So, all right, here we go. Coats the mouth nicely, picking up some, <clears throat> definitely some bake, uh, cinnamon and baking spices from cooked agave up front. It does have a little bit of a citrus with bitterness in it, so like, like an orange peel note that comes through right after that. A little hint of, of anise of black licorice, <clears throat> followed by just this nice sweet cinnamon note on the tongue. This is delicious. This is a really nice Blanco. It's not super complex. It's fairly straightforward, but it would make it a great sipper for somebody looking just for something to sip on that's not too complex and would be great for making cocktails as well. So I would rate this one four agave out of five. It's nothing fantastic, but it's a, it's a, it's a really nice uh, representative of what a good tequila should taste like, a good Blanco tequila. So um, there you go. Let's uh, now dive into the Reposado and see what we get on the Reposado. All right, so let's get into the uh, Reposado. Now, um, for those of you that are doing aging projects with the Beyond Barrel Aging Staves, that Blanco would be a good uh, Blanco to age using the aging staves, considering, too, that it's under $40 um, for the Blanco. So that would be a nice one to use for aging projects. So we're putting a little bit of the <coughs> Reposado in the glass. Now, um... One thing, too, I did have a little issue with the Blanco with the cap. The uh, glue, I guess, wasn't very good on it. So you have to be careful with that where the glue comes off, and then you have to kind of pry the cork out of the bottle. So we did have that issue, but I'll probably um, age this bottle, too, to see how it works with an aging stave. All right, so looking at the Reposado in the glass, <clears throat> again, it coats the glass wonderfully. Can see the legs and tears forming on the top it's still going to be very viscous a nice oily mouthfeel to it you can see the, the tears there starting to form looking at the reposado it is a very light straw type color so um that's typical too if they used a, a pre previously heavily used um bourbon barrel so there's nothing wrong with that at all looking at the tequila it is crystal clear <clears throat> All right, let's see what we get on the nose on this. I do get the cinnamon and baking spices. Just more now with a, a little hint of vanilla and caramel coming through. Uh, a slight hint of like uh, dried apricots in the nose as well. It smells good. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we get on the flavor profile. Nice viscous mouthfeel to it. Definitely picking up cinnamon and baking spices. Some vanilla coming through. Some light caramel notes coming through. It's very nice. A lot of the, the bitter notes that were in the Blanco are gone now because of uh, the aging in this. So this one is incredibly smooth and very easy to drink. Uh, no burn to it at all. If you're somebody that likes a, a really smooth, you know, no burn, easy to drink uh, tequila. I hate using the word smooth, but um, everybody else uses so much. This is very, extremely easy to drink. Goes down really easily. Um, very enjoyable. So I would give this one for Agave as well for the repo. It's good. Very easy, super easy to drink. I mean, I could drink this bottle really quickly, I'm sure. 
uh, and it wouldn't phase me. It also would be nice with a nice stogie. Um, very light vanilla and and um, caramel flavors coming in with the cooked agave, so it's it's very enjoyable. So there you go. There's my review of um, El Bandito Yankee for agave for both the Blanco and the Repo. If you like the information I share with you in this video, make sure you click the thumbs up and give me a like. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido, welcome. And don't forget to click the subscribe button right there and the notification bell next to it so you get notified every time I post a new review or informational videos or even when I go live. And we'd love to have you comment and become part of the Tequila Ombre community. And for those of you that are members of the channel, thank you so much for your membership. I appreciate your support. And we're going to do a credit video. I didn't get it done for this one, but we'll get it done for the next one. Um, we'll, it'll show all of, all of you that support the channel. And I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And until next time, like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila. So if you wanted to pick up El Bandito Yankee, you'll be drinking some good stuff. Salud. Bye, guys.